Listening to tr- you are listening to Truth Over Comfort Podcast with-, with Carlos Morales and Taryn Harris. Brought to you by the Blue Ridge Liberty Project. Hey everyone, this is Carlos Morales and this is Truth Over Comfort. Everything is found at truthovercomfort.net. Today we are talking to MK Lords of Bitcoin Not Bombs and a former guest on our show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So what kind of I thought of kind of having you on the show because there's a specific topic that it's been kind of going through my head recently and I've been bringing it up to multiple people and essentially it's the idea of respecting other people's beliefs, right? So though the common view among the public, whether it be bar patron or pundit, is that the highest virtue uh, within communication is to respect others' beliefs. It's a message that's spread near and far without a hint of skepticism. And of course, though, when something is held as virtuous within a society that is so fundamentally asked backwards with respect to philosophy, whether that be people's views of government, God, education, or parenting, then it may come as no surprise that this virtue may not be a virtue at all. What exactly does it mean to respect other beliefs? Well, commonly, it's the presupposition that all beliefs are equally valid. It's as if taste and fact are one and the same. Secondly, it's a view that others should not be questioned. Why, oh, why would a society that is so fundamentally run on authority would people be such a fan of that? Third, it also assumes that individuals are incapable of being able to control their own emotions when it comes to ideas, dogmas, beliefs, faith, etc. In essence, it's about sticking your tail between your legs rather than exploring new ideas with your peers. What are kind of some of your thoughts on this, MK? So you you raised a lot of really good points. I think it's good to distinguish between object, objective and subjective. For instance, when it comes to preferences, I don't really care what other people prefer when it comes to, you know, what sodas they want to drink, you know, what kind of food they want to put in their body. All that doesn't really matter to me. What matters to me is when people try to force their preferences on others. I think that's when you come to a contention. And what you have is a huge majority of people forcing their status beliefs on a lot of people who are trying to live peaceful lives and I think when it comes to using government force against people you have to draw a clear line and say you know that this isn't right and challenge them on some of their beliefs. I've probably been a little bit cautious in the past when it comes to challenging people on their beliefs. I tend to be a very let's you know let's all get along kind of person uh, but if, if these beliefs are harmful and they cross the, into like the physical territory, for example, and they absolutely must be challenged. Or if someone has a pedestal that uh, they're able to wield and they're very strongly expressing these opinions that may be uh, just not factual at all, then they definitely deserve to be challenged on that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, one of the main times that people end up telling me to respect others' beliefs is generally whenever it comes to religion. So a lot of the discussions I have are with libertarians who are extremists in modern day dialogue when it comes to political conversation as a whole because we're like not for killing other people or stealing things crazy so generally though what occurs is I decide to bring up faith-based thinking which is something that I am kind of against because it's antithetical to rational thought so what will happen is these libertarians in this particular case will call other people things like sheeple and muggles and all these other incredibly derogatory terms for people to not agree with them about these particular topics. But when it comes to God, then it's, why are you disrespecting others' beliefs? That has nothing to do with you. It's not going to do anything to you whatsoever. And it's like if we are ignoring and, and preventing ourselves from discussing certain points out of a fear of making a, a situation uncomfortable – that is anti-progress as far as thought is concerned. If people didn't question other people's beliefs, then, well, actually, no one ever questioned my beliefs. I'd still believe in Santa, that the world is mostly flat, uh, that the Easter Bunny is actually real. Essentially, I had a lot of incorrect ideas, and because other people decided to question what I was stating, that's how I I ended, ended up being able to gain knowledge. It's through not respecting others' beliefs that we're able to figure things out. 
Yes, in a way, and that's what really brought me around to a lot of these principles was being challenged on what I believed. And I grew up uh, in a pretty far right-wing town. It was a military town, very uh, a lot of far right-wing policies, and I backlashed really hard to the left, um, which is is entirely incorrect uh, in a lot of ways. And it took libertarians that were challenging my beliefs on on things like the social contract and some of these other really destructive ideas that really brought me around and I'm really grateful for them and it was also in the way that they did it too so I'm all for challenging people's beliefs and perhaps sometimes I'm a a little bit too cautious but I do try to at least approach them respectfully um, and try to engage in dialogue because I do think a lot of things can be solved through peaceful dialogue and it's assumptive to say that oh well someone's just, that's just not gonna work if you challenge someone at all that they're just gonna backlash and you know not respect your beliefs or not or even not even engage in dialogue I, I don't think that's that's really fair I think you can approach people respectfully and challenge them very directly uh, and, and have a meaningful impact on them yeah, in order, and here's the thing, is when I start with these conversations with people, there's a few different things that will occur. One of them is is whenever I'm logically kind of breaking down why the argument may be incorrect, a lot of times they'll like shoot at me with like, oh, well, you're up on your high horse and you think you know everything, yada, yada, yada. It's like, no, I just see logical issues with your statements. And in order to kind of give an empathetic ear to it, though, I, I want people to understand that I know I think that I have all the answers. But... Through conversation, I'm able to learn more. For instance, I used to have a bunch of silly beliefs. Up until I was about 15 or 16, I was a Catholic, and I believed that everyone who was not a Catholic was going to burn in hell. So what I did was I was evangelical about my beliefs, which I think is the moral, in many ways, the moral thing to do. Because if you think all your friends are going to burn in hell, you should be really trying hard to prevent them from going to hell. And it was through conversations that I had one of my friends who was just like, you know, your ideas are fucking crazy, right? Like, you have no basis in reality. Here's some pendulant nine rand. I was like, oh, wow, I'm wrong. And in the same way, around the exact same age, I went, you know, I was a Democrat. You know, I was like, oh, war is kind of necessary, and welfare helps the poor, and public school is good for the citizenry, even though I was in public school and I was realized the fact that I was learning fucking nothing in the eight hours a day that I was there. But it was through conversations that I had with friends that I was shown to be incorrect, which is the reason I'm in the position that I'm in now. What are some of the more silly beliefs that you kind of used to have? Well, a, a lot of uh, socialist beliefs, the belief in the social contract, the belief in public schooling especially, despite it, you raise the same points that I always bring up with public schooling. It's horribly ineffectual at teaching you critical thinking or anything uh, useful as far as life skills go. Um, I was a vegan uh, for a year and a vegetarian for about five years prior to becoming a vegan and that I was probably the most religious about. I definitely viewed it as a period of uh, religiosity in my life because I was preaching to everyone the, the good news about veganism and it destroyed my health is what ended up happening um, but I did encounter a few very logical arguments against it uh, that also helped change my mind. Ultimately, it was just through my own, uh, you know, trial and error. This is obviously not working for my body, um, and obviously, it's you know can create a lot of deficiencies, especially if you just do the simple, basic research that's out there. Um, I really think. I, one of the greatest tools against ignorance is the internet. I mean, you, you, there's a lot of crap on there too. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but you can challenge your own beliefs. You can find very good evidence uh, for the beliefs that you either already believe or that people are challenging you on. You know, the, there are a lot of facts that you simply can't argue about. You cannot argue that the, you know the Earth is round. Like obviously, the Earth is not flat. Uh, that's that's a very uh, silly belief, but I uh, but there's a, there's a lot there's a lot out there, and it's good to be able to kind of cut through it. And what what really annoys me is kind of these overly broad uh, assumptions on people. Like I, I hate it when people start a sentence with, "Well, everyone's a little bit." Insert whatever you want to insert there. It's really ignorant, and it's it's very wrong, I think, to overgeneralize with something like that. Because people are individuals, we're so different among each other. Uh, you can maybe generalize on some things, but I have a very hard problem. I have a very uh, big issue with someone saying, "Well, everyone is something." Oh no! And it, the, the thing is, is everyone is kind of something is generally a projection of the guilt that they already have. So it's kind of like so. There's two different cases, and I mean, the state and religion are one and the same in many ways. 
because the same arguments are used constantly in regards to chaos happening if we lose one or the other. So I was talking to a guy, and it was like, without religion, people would just be raping everyone. And I was like, I want to stay the fuck away from you, because obviously you have some really, really weird issues where you think if you don't have religion, you just think it's okay to just rape people. Similarly, I would have a conversation with someone who stated something like, uh, without uh, government, everybody would just be stabbing each other on a constant basis. And I thought, you know, I'm hanging out with you. You're hanging out with me. We're having a nice little conversation or anything else. Are you telling me that if suddenly the government went away, you just start going stabby? And so it's one of two things. Either they feel that way uh, about themselves and they, they're trying to worry about that, or they just assume everyone is too stupid in comparison to them, which kind of gets back to the idea of respecting others' beliefs. Because here's the thing. Essentially, the idea of respecting other people's beliefs is generally, well, I'm good enough to be able to handle these ideas, but that asshole can't handle it because he can't. He doesn't have the emotional intelligence enough to do it. It, it goes along the same lines of, well, they're sheeple, and they're muggles, so they're dumb, while at the same time, of course, ignoring the fact that I used to have insane-ass beliefs, too, and if someone were to codify me as a sheep or a muggle and did talk to me back then, I'd still be fucked. I'm not that much more special than any other individual, except for the work that I put in in order to become a better speaker or a better thinker or anything else, but I'm not going to put myself in some kind of elite position, which I think is really what respecting others' beliefs in par partly is, is about. If someone's starting the dialogue with insulting you, like calling you a name or a sheeple, it's probably not worth the emotional energy to spend trying to reason with that person. They're already coming from an emotional standpoint. And generally, people who start off an argument with very high emotions, it's very hard to talk them out of it, at least in my experience. So I do kind of take it case by case in a little bit. There are some people that I know their personality type, and I know that when it comes to certain subjects, they will completely shut down even if you try to approach it peacefully so there are some people that I do just kind of say well you know I care about you I want you to know the truth I want you to understand this but maybe they are not ready for that dialogue yet because they can't do it in a peaceful manner whereas there are I still think most people need to be challenged on what they believe obviously and if you're not willing to engage in peaceful dialogue or, or critically think about your beliefs whatever they are then you're really shorting yourself is what it comes down to it's, and, and that's a really sad thing because in this era of time, there's really no excuse to be ignorant about just about any topic. You can do the research yourself. It's, it's all out there, and it's very easy to find. Now, there are some dark corners. You made, you made a good point with, uh, for example, the kind of conspiracy theory crowd, and I, I did fall into that for a little while when I first discovered Ron Paul. I was kind of into some of the Alex Jones uh, you know, type information. I think a lot of people who got introduced to Ron Paul went in that direction for a while, but the arguments don't really hold up, and the dialogue is just terrible try, trying to talk to some of these people. There's, it's a very unreasonable approach to dialogue, and that's, that's really upsetting, and I, I think a part of that kind of comes from uh, the culture of television, even, where the most popular shows are the ones that stir up the most conflict. Instead of resolving a problem, you just bring someone on air to yell at them, and you see that kind of emulated by people all the time. You know they're spending hours and hours watching these shows where it's all conflict that's never resolved. And yeah, it's not a reflection this, of reality. Yeah, there's always this 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 notion. There's two sides to every issue. No, there's not. Two plus two equals four, asshole. There is that you can actually find answers, but it always reverts to this weird, like kind of nihilistic thing. One of the points I was bringing up earlier was the thing about respect to other people's beliefs, a lot of the times, it basically comes to the idea that everything is kind of relative, even objective things. So they'll make these statements that are just insane, right? So they'll say something like, words are meaningless. Well, you just used words in order to make an objective statement based off of reality and things that you've been able to observe using logical statements. So your words are meaningless is a meaningless statement because it's contradictory in its very essence. So another statement they'll say is something like, well, everything is subjective. Well, in that particular case, you are making an objective claim based off of reality, another self-detonating statement. So, And people are just kind of allowed to get away with it because especially in academia, there's always this tilt of nihilistic undertone in order to get people to justify particular things. But of course, this nihilism is also authority-based because it goes back into the faith-based thinking. 
because since you cannot find out knowledge logically, there's no autodidactism or anything else, it's always left to someone else to tell you what is right or wrong, and which perfectly suits into the professor in this particular case telling you what's true, what's false, the politician, the uh, Pierce Morgan or whatever else asshole media pundits out there who's going to be telling you what is right or wrong. So it's this perfect ebb and flow of like just dodging and weaving and weaving and weaving and then like topping it off with, well, you should respect those beliefs. And you just kind of want to shake them. Shake these people, but there, there is a there is a valuable point though that you brought up, which is trying to figure out when it's proper or not to kind of bring up these things. So you're always on this kind of balance of trying not to be an asshole at the same time and trying to express new ideas. And it's important for us to do that. For one thing, it's important not to necessarily psychologize the person instantly as soon as you start talking to them by calling them a sheeple or saying that they're schizophrenic or sociopathic or something else or that they want everyone to die. So assuming from the get-go that this person does want to understand the world better and that they don't want to kill people, even if they are a Democrat and they don't realize they're doing that, it's probably a good start. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go towards the conversation at all. We just lose MK. We just lost MK. Am I back again? And you're back. All right. Okay, you raised a point that I was going to bring up about assuming things. So I try not to assume that people have ulterior, ulterior motives when they say these things, even if I disagree with them. I, I generally try to uh, take them at face value and you know think that what they're saying is what they actually believe um, and challenge them on that. Um, you, what, a problem you see with the conspiracy mindset, and I'm not talking about the Alex Jones conspiracy, but a broader uh, mindset that there's, you know, this overarching evil, call it the patriarchy, call it, call it whatever you want to call it, um, you know, th there's a lot of assumptions being made, and you really have to kind of backtrack and uh, kind of detached from that. I, I found myself falling into that mindset before, you know, talking with people who believe that you can use the state for good and stuff like that, and, you know, almost coming close to assuming, you know, that just because they're a status that they have ill will towards people, and that's not true. Uh, just like, be, just as if because you're a man, you know, you don't benefit from this overarching patriarchy and, you know, this kind of specter that doesn't actually exist. Um, but they use these buzzwords, and you brought up a good point about academia, so the danger from this kind of fuzzy thinking in this, oh, everything is relative thing, if everything's relative, then war's relative. Then killing people in other countries is relative. Then, uh, you know, creating these wars that are never going to stop is relative. Then stealing from people is relative. And, you know, you can justify anything you want under that blanket. And that's a serious problem for people who believe in natural law or who believe that you can have, a, you know, strong ethics uh, you know, coming from within, or you know, uh, from your yeah, the, the 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 relativity, yeah, it really gets in there. I remember in, I was in a political science class, and um, and back in when I was in college, and there were these people who were like throwing concepts over themselves, right? They're like, well, I'm a neo realist, and they're like, therefore, I believe in war and all these other things, like essentially, and so they get in these conversations where they'd be justifying war. And I remember one of the times I stopped in the middle of class, like, you know, we're having a discussion. I go, hey, um, are, you, are you willing to go to Iraq right now and strangle all those kids with your bare hands? And the professor got really mad at me, and it was just like, no, 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 we're talking about killing fucking human beings. We're not talking relatives or abstractions or anything else. But because it's far away, it doesn't seem that weird. And just asking the basic questions of, are you willing to kill this person personally? If you're not willing to do that, then why is it okay for other people to do that. You know, it's, it's, it's a backwards ass way of thinking, especially uh, ethically, as far as that is concerned. Um, so MK, uh, was there any kind of final thoughts you had in regards to this subject? Yeah, I did want to bring, uh, I wanted to kind of add on to your point, when you see these Thought, you know, these points brought up by academics, or uh, I was almost a philosophy major, and I've argued with a lot of philosophy majors, and they tend to kind of uh, do the same kind of everything is relative kind of thing, and do these thought experiments, and thought experiments are fine. 
But I like practical thought experiments. And if you're giving me a hypothetical that is unlikely to ever exist, then that's problematic to, to prove a really obscure point. I've gotten into an argue in lots of you know discussions with far left, uh, you know, kind of philosophy major types, and they do try to use this this reasoning to justify a lot of things or to attack anarchism or libertarianism based on really faulty thought experiments. So to me, a thought experiment is valid if it's actually possible to happen. Uh, I don't really have much appreciation for uh, people who try to use these thought experiments that are just very, uh, very strange and unlikely to actually exist in real time. No, that's that's the, the bullshit of the lifeboat scenarios where they go, well, because in this one particular case it doesn't work. It's like, no, 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 we're able to form concepts even if there's sometimes a little bit of issues. Like, for the most part, I could say horses have four legs. Well, in this one case, it had five legs. Therefore, your entire idea is completely retarded. <laughs> no, no. In, in most of the cases, this, most cases, it's not cool to kill or steal. In all cases, it's not cool to rape. Like, we can have this discussion, but, of course, they always float into these insane abstractions so that they can finally just be like, see, it's okay to kill 1.5 million people in Iraq destroy 2.5 million of their lives, ensure that one out of the 10 dads dies, one out of two of the sons in these particular Iraqi families sees a traumatic event and that we became trillions of dollars in debt in order to justify because of lifeboat scenarios. See? Because there's this one little issue right there. Therefore, you know, that's fine. But of course, this these same people who are going to justify all this crazy shit, whenever I bring up God, they're going to say, why don't you just respect other people's beliefs? And to that, I say, fuck that. And, uh, wow, there's a lot of cussing these uh, tonight. But uh, anyway, uh, make sure to check out uh, all my stuff at truthovercomfort.net. And I'm doing the True Objective podcast with um, uh, Lauren Rumpler, Objective Scroll, so definitely check that out. Um, MK, Bitcoin, not bombs. Is there anything else that you'd like to, uh, any other websites you'd like to throw out there? Uh, you can see myself at Bitcoin Magazine. Uh, I'll be writing for Crypto Biz Magazine also. Uh, that's an you know, up-and-coming Bitcoin magazine that's going to be coming out. So, yeah, just keep an eye out, and I'll be doing interviews. So you can always check out my YouTube channel. Just type in MK Lords. I just put one up with Cody Wilson. Um, and, yeah, my Twitter handle is at MK Lords. So I'm pretty easy to find. Oh, Cody, that's awesome. Oh, and uh, one more thing. I'm going to be throwing out, uh, I'm going to be doing a show with a representative from California regarding anti-bullying laws, the government's campaign against bullying. <laughs> make up some holes in that, but uh, but uh, definitely check that out. That'll be coming out pretty soon. So thank you all again. And remember, truthovercomfort.net. Y'all have a great day.